Mr. Speaker, my government has undertaken a series of initiatives that has already transformed the social and economic landscape of this country. As a precondition for reshaping the country, we have stabilized the finances of the country and placed the public debt on a sustainable path. We have established the youth economy, re-energized and repositioned the tourism sector, expanded education opportunities and scholarships for students in keeping with our one university per household, provided tangible support to teachers, parents, public officers, farmers, fishers, pensioners, micro, small, and medium-sized businesses, created employment for sportsmen for the semi-professional football league, improved the ease of doing business environment, expanded health care, access for the elderly, pregnant mothers, diabetic and high blood pressure patients, equipped law enforcement with the appropriate training and operational equipment to combat, to combat crime, enhanced the protection of our natural patrimony and the environment, advanced the digital transformation of government services, implemented tax reforms and, and tax amnesty to citizens and businesses, and improved the tax refund processes. Mr. Speaker, the people-centric policies of this government under the mantra putting people first are well rooted in our philosophical belief in social justice and wealth creation. These principles, along with good governance, will continue to guide the thinking, actions, and developmental thrust of this government. We believe no one should be left behind, especially the less fortunate and marginalized, while our country advances towards greater economic prosperity. We will continue to deliver on our 2021-26 party manifesto promises to the people of St. Lucia. During my statement on the estimates for, for revenue and expenditure, I emphasize that this 24-25 budget aims to establish a strong foundation for sustainable economic growth. The investments and employment opportunities that will be provided across all major sectors of the economy will bring real hope to the people. We will continue to build upon our previous successes, which have resulted in impressive economic rate growths of 11.5%, 20%, and 2.2% in GDP after a contraction of over 24.5% in 2020. Mr. Speaker, permit me to place the 2024-2025 budget in its proper context by presenting our scorecard on the last two budgets and the reason for our optimistic outlook. Here are some of the highlights of our numerous achievements. One, unemployment was reduced to 14%, the lowest level in 16 years. Serious inroads in youth unemployment were achieved and remained committed to its reduction as the youth economy builds momentum. We provided over 11,700 new laptops to our students, putting us on track to provide every St. Lucian student in a secondary school with a laptop under our one laptop per child policy. We have reinvested heavily in Tivet education certification to close the gap between skills and jobs available in the private sector. We introduced the highly anticipated <laughs> Universal Healthcare, UHC, which offers senior citizens free medical care hospitals and wellness centers across the island, as well as, well as prenatal and postnatal care to mothers. On, on August 2nd, 2023, we removed 12.5% 12, 12 value added tax on medical equipment for two years to incentivize the medical practitioners to procure medical equipment and to reduce the cost of medical examinations. We launched the 80 plus healthcare campaign in July 2023, which gives access to a package of free medical services at community wellness centers to persons 80 years and over. These services include prescription drugs, annual hearing tests, and access to the services at the Cuban Eye Clinic. Since November 1st, 2022, we continue to make significant progress on the reconstruction of the St. Jude Hospital. 
we secured US 75 million from Saudi Arabian Development Fund to complete the hospital and the re rehabilitation of the George Odlum Stadium. We launched the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises loan grant facility for 10 million to support the post-COVID pandemic recovery and growth of the MSME sector. In March 2023, we paid millions in outstanding back pay to public servants. We facilitated access to finance the, the operations of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex in the amount of 23.05 million. We paid 11.5 million in August last year to honor commitments made by the last administration to help CD Cayman for medical consultancy fees. We injected 1 million into the reinstated distress fund to bring relief to fire victims with uninsured homes. July 2023, we removed the 12.5% value-added tax on selected building materials, which included plywood, lumber, cement, galvanized, and solar PV systems for a two-year period to encourage home improvements. In October 2023, we secured funding of 26 million for the St. Lucia Fire Service to procure new ambulances and fire, and fire appliances and for the reconfiguration of fire service administration and training facilities. In August 2023, we paid an additional $600 to teachers for classroom material, which brought the allowance to $1,400 per year. We secured additional financing of $20.5 million to support the Youth Economy Agency the year, which provides funding for an additional 3,000 young solutions to assist them in turning their talents and skills and hobbies into viable business enterprises. In August 2023, we secured a landmark development of Global Port Holdings, GPH, to develop the cruise infrastructure of Port Castries and Port Souffre. In May 2023, St. Lucia became the fifth member state of the Caribbean community to accede to the appellant jurisdiction of the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCG, making access to justice for our children more accessible and affordable. We have commenced construction of the new custody suites to facilitate the police in crime fighting and the preservation of law and order in the country. We have commenced construction of EC 45 million Northern Divisional Police Headquarters in Grosely and have almost completed major renovations on the Southern Divisional Headquarters in Viewforts. These facilities are expected to significantly improve the working environment of our police officers. Throughout the year, the police was supported with strategic investments in technical training, tactical equipment, special operational assets, motor vehicles, motorcycles and bicycles. In addition, the capacity of the forensic lab was strengthened with cutting-edge firearms identification and analysis equipment. In November 2023, we made a one-time payment of $600 to approximately 3,000 government pensioners, amounting to $1.7 million, in addition to 500 payments in November 2022, amounting to $1.4 million. In December 2023, we began providing income support payments of $1,500 per person to 500 households in the informal sector workers who are adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. This will continue into the new year with $5 million set aside for that program. The government paid over $20 million in tax refunds to taxpayers in 2023. In, in April 2023, we extended the 100% waiver on interest and penalties for individuals and businesses on all taxes, including VAT and withholding tax, provided that these taxes were settled in full by May 1, 2024. We have removed withholding taxes of 10% on small contracts, up to $10,000, to provide more disposable income for small contractors. After inheriting, inheriting payables of $160 million due to local businesses, the government has settled 50% of these payables, effectively in injecting $80 million into the local business sector. To assist with combating imported inflation, the government continues to subsidize the 2022 pound cooking gas 
at an average of $15 per cylinder, which amounted to $8.1 million during 2023 and $13.4 million in 2022. Throughout 2023, the government heavily subsidized the price of flour, sugar, and rice, amounting to $11.5 million in 2022. In 2022, the subsidy on flour alone was $8.9 million, of which $5.6 million went to bakers and $3.3 million went to the public. We removed the 6% service charge on price control products. We removed VAT charges on sanitary products for women, for women and placed those products under the price control list of items, which meant a further reduction in cost by the removal of the 6% service charge. We launched a 27 million project to assist farmers in building adaptive and harvest, adapt, adapting capabilities, harvesting rainwater, practicing soil conservation management, and developing green agro-processing facilities and parks. We commenced work on the Shurzel fishing port and the Denry fish landing facility. We have also started work on other fish landing facilities and the construction of the Miku jetty and fish landing facility. Qualified fisher folk with valid licenses who are affiliates of registered fisher folk societies now receive a $2.50 per gallon fuel rebate up from the previous $1.50. Construction work has started on the library markets and square. Construction work has started on the Larissus Health and Wellness Center. These, Mr. Speaker, are just some of the many initiatives undertaken by this government that, are, that have brought the meaningful change to the socio-economic landscape of our country and the lives of ordinary citizens who deserve a better St. Lucia.